All right, check, check, baby. Chicken check. Checkers. Check your neck. That's what they used to say a lot. Check your neck. And people would go like this. Or run a cheese check, they say it. Run a cheese check on your daddy. Because, you know, my dad was real old when I was born. And when I was young, he was even older. And the older I got, the older he got. And I was kind of chasing him, you know, age chasing. And then he died. But um, a lot of times we do pizza. You know, I was on different sporting teams. Or my sister was on a little sporting team, you know, a little lesbian group. And then they would have a pizza party. It used to, originally it was if you won. If you won, your team got a pizza party. And then that evolved to even if you got second. And then it became hell. If your team even, if you even had a team. You, you'd see some kids just we're all wearing the same jersey, never played anything, eating pizza. So it became really just every, anybody could do it. But they used to say run a cheese check on your daddy because my dad was so old when he'd have pizza, he could, you know, the cheese comes off that pie. When you release that slice off that circle, you really get a lot of that, you know, those little little kind of like a cheese web kind of like a, a lot of little cheese little string cheeses that go from the slice back to that motherland that master pie circle and so a lot of times you know my dad he didn't know what the hell was going on he didn't know you know who was who was his kid or who was black or who was white or anything i mean he didn't know if you were a car or a person so not, i remember one time he put a half a gallon of gas into the back of my pants so you just, uh, you know, daddy would have, a, have him a slice of that pizza and he'd have cheese just draped all over him. And some of the kids would say, hey, 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 run a cheese check on your daddy. And you'd have to just kind of, you know, check on his face like that. You'd have to do that dang, dang, da dang, dang. And cheese check your daddy, make sure you don't have any just cheese just draping off his face. You know, like somebody's trying to speed lunk off his face or something. And so, you know, you don't, you just want to make sure, you know, that was kind of that deal. But, um, yeah, check, check, chicken, check. That's a popular term. They say chicken, check. Because a chicken, you know, a lot of people don't think about a chicken. Think about a chicken. Now what? A chicken, you uh, seeing a chicken used to be like 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 coming across a McDaniel's, bro. When you're driving, and you you see the you know you see the the arches, you said, "Oh, dang, that's a McDaniel's right there." That's the same in the old days. If you came across a chicken in the 1600s, 1700s, that's like pulling up on a restaurant. You know, you're riding with your family. You guys are in the uh you know, riding in a horse cart or whatever. And you see a chicken, they say, Dad, Dad, stop there, Dad. Stop at that restaurant. And the restaurant's just over there. It's like, burr, 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 burr. and y'all go over there and slice and dice. And mom does her thing, and that's family dining. That's 1600s family dining, man. And the chicken dies, but hey, Somebody's got to go, man. And that's called that chicken check. Happy autumn. We running right here. We running up on the heels of winter. If you, if you listen, you can, you, can, you can really feel. If you listen with your emotions, you can really feel us just kind of lapping up onto the, onto the heels of winter. Just nipping at the heels. <laughs> Just nipping at the heels of that icy bitch, Miss Winter. And she's doing her thing. Oh, dang, blah, 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 blah. 
but we coming at her, baby. Let's get into the episode. This is a little Matthew Kazial with Runs in the Family. It's out of my hands and in my blood. Amen, baby. It's red in a letter and I can't pay up. Blessed by the wicked, washed in the mud. Mm-hmm. Can't save my soul, so let the valley flood. Tell him, baby. Catch me on Grinder, huh? There you go, Maddie. It's just a matter of time. There ain't no stopping the sad sun. Can't watch the scene from the heads of made me can now run with runs in the family. Runs in the family. Amen, Maddie. You can cut me down, but the roots run deep. I ain't going to die when they bury me. I wonder what I'll do when I die, you know? If I lay there, if I'll probably... I'll probably try to sneak over and just tickle somebody else that's been laying there. Piss somebody off, man. Hey, hey. Cut out all the bullshit. I wonder what my neighbors will be like where I get buried. That's why, you know, people want to get buried by their family, but you got to think about that. You got to think about that. You want to get buried, you know. I mean, it's nice to be by your mom for like an hour. But I don't know if you want to be buried right by her. It's nice to be by your uncle, bro. But if he, you know, if he gets into gambling or shit, it ain't fun. You know, it's just, it's like, who, where do you, who do you want to be buried? I almost wish that they had a, um, they had a uh, funeral parlor that had a kind of a 10 disc changer. Remember them CD changers, them 10 disc changers? That they had one of those in the ground and everybody was on kind of a lazy Susan and you just got to kind of, you know, just do like a little bit of speed dating kind of while you're in the dirt. Just something where you could cross paths with with different, with some difference. Because, yeah, for the first hour or two, it'd be cozy being with your folks, but man. About 10 p.m. and after they shut down, they saw... You know, a couple of episodes at Law and Order SVU, and they're turning down the lights. You're gonna want to howl a little. You're gonna want to get out. You're gonna want to throw one of your bones into the distance, and let some dirty dog go get it. You know, that's one thing about skeleton. That's why I think if skele- if if ghosts were made, you know, if they had real skeletons. Dogs would attack them all the time. So you got to think about that right there. I mean, you know, you couldn't send a skeleton real far without a dog getting that bitch right by the neck or by the Cossex or whatever or the occipital or whatever. I don't remember. You know, I only got to be in eighth grade in uh, science, but. You know, shout out to science, bro. We had a. um. When I was young, we had a science teacher, and he used to do uh, deltoids at the gym. And he would do uh, deltoids all the time. And he would also, at the same time, eat altoids. And so his big thing, he would get you to come over by him, and he'd be doing deltoids, and he'd he'd blow a little bit of mint smoke out of his mouth and be doing altoids. He'd have nine altoids in his mouth. And I'm not saying that, I mean, I don't know what the pH balance is of somebody's breath if they got nine altoids in them, but 
I mean, you like a damn Christmas chimney at that point. You running a lot of heat, I feel like. And shout out to that man, Mr. Cave, man. And he went to jail for, uh, you know, dating underage ladies. But before that, he was a good man. I'll say that. And I think he served his time, too. So it's, you know, and he looked good in a tank top. I'll say that shit. You know, I'm an adult and he's an adult. But hell, he looked good in a damn tank top. What's going on? We just had uh, um the death man in. We had Frank Giles in here. And I tell you, you know, it's it's interesting when you meet a man that's that's that close to the dead. And you're right there, you're with him. You know, it's interesting when you when you meet a man who 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 who's carried a, you know, that 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 15-inch baby and tucked him into a car seat next to him. And driven him over there to the death grounds. It's interesting to be that close to that man. And just kind of just hear his feelings. Hell I asked him straight up. I said let me put my hand on your chest. You know. Let me feel the drum of the, of, 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 of death. Because when he walks in the room baby. That's it. You were to go order for the Lord son. You, it's time to box you up. And so, yeah, I guess I start thinking about that around this time of year. What's it going to be like when they clo- when they roll it up one more time? You know, I tried to fake my death when I was about 20. I'll be honest. And my friend Paul called a couple people and said, hey, you know, Theo's dead. And, and the, shit, the crazy shit was none of them even told anybody. So we planted a couple seeds and that shit didn't even grow, bro. And then we forgot about it. You know, we was doing weed. We was doing cocaine, daddy, you know. I mean, I was anyway. I don't know if he was, but, you know, my favorite type of weed was uh, cocaine. You'd see me snorting a bowl of weed, you know. Get that little, (laughs) that Thanksgiving for your snout, daddy. I'm talking about cocaine. Dude, I remember I had some I had some good cocaine one time over there in Tucson, Arizona. Hell, I put two grams in my car. It was out of gas. And that bitch ran for a half an hour. The headlights wouldn't work, but hey, you can't have it all, daddy. You can't have it all, and that's God, man. What else is going on? Uh, did a show last night out here, out here in the Central East. I want to thank everybody that came out. It was a beautiful time, man. You know, and just good to just be in a room with people and laughing and feeling good. You know, and really just feeling good. And, um, um, yeah, we had a nice time. A couple of young bucks around here got up and did some comedy to start the show off. You know, I was all, I was on the show and, you know, they're only, the, 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 the crowds here are at half capacity. So they're you know only allowed about 160 people or something 150 people in the showroom. So it's kind of nice because it's almost like you get to practice, but it's still a regular show for everybody that's there. And um, you know it'll just have to make do for now. You know I'm grateful to have just a spot to get out there, man. It really is. Uh, it really is a good deal. But yeah, we had the Death Man in here. We had him right here. And it's crazy. I mean, if say fast forward 40 years from now, 80 years from now when I die. Or when I, you know, go on. I should have told, I should have put my order in. I should have said, hey, Frank, I want this. You know, I want this and this. I want the, you know, I want the, I want the strawberries and whipped cream, on, one under each arm. When I'm in that basket, daddy. And I want that wicker casket so you could still, still smell me. So the ladies could still get a off of my bro loan, you feel me? But I don't know. It's tricky. How do you want to go? Cremated is too much. I don't want to be, you know, I worked one day as a damn uh, chef's apprentice over at, um, uh, over at Roadhouse Cafe or whatever that shithole was, um, Link, Lo- I don't know what it was, dude. They were supposed to be selling char-grilled steaks, but the FDA showed up and popped them. 
and got them. They were selling um. They were selling Ill- illegal uh, meat. You know, they had to hit a raft in there. They had to hit a pony or something. You know, the, some of the shit they were selling was illegal meat. And that's the second time in my life I've been popped at a joint where they're selling illegal. You know, I was out in Tucson, Arizona, and they had this little chef fella named Little Scotty, and they popped him, and he wore a big-ass hat, too heavy for his neck. And you would see him kind of like this a little bit. And the, the hat was so damn heavy, it would close his eyelids, man. But, you know, when you're a chef, they don't give you like a medallion. You know, some things they give you a medallion if you do well. But a chef, they give you a big hat. Looks kind of like an like an atomic bomb explosion shape. And he was so damn proud. And I think his daddy thought he was bigger. And his daddy hadn't seen him in a while. And his daddy got him a too heavy of a hat for his little neck. And so he had that big bastard on there. And he could barely keep his eyes open with that heavy bitch on there. But they, uh... Yeah, they got but they were selling illegal seafood, and I remember the FDA showed up and popped everybody, dude. You know, some dude asking me if I know about shrimp, bitch. I don't know about shit. I'm a bus boy, okay. And they need bread on eight right now, so don't try to tangle me up all in this little mermaid bullshit. But anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get all fired up, but um. But yeah, we out here. That's what I'm saying. And I forgot to tell you a little bit more about that song on the way in. That was Runs in the Family by Matthew Kozial. Talented young fella. And we'll have the link there to uh to his uh to his sound so you can go get a hold of him and see what's going on with him. And what's going on with you? I'd love to know. I'd love if you guys could hit the hotline, 985-664-9503. And just let me know who's listening to the to, to, to the show. If you work at a kindergarten, say that. Say, hey, this is Rhonda. You know, I work at a kindergarten. You know, I like Skittles or I like to, you know, blow a Winston every now and then. You know, and I like to listen to the podcast or, you know, this is uh Timothy. And I'm 40, but I still go by the by by, by the name Timothy. And um, you know, I, I'm a janitorial. I do janitorial by the church, and I listen to the podcast. Hit the hotline, man. Let us know who's listening, just so I know what's going on out there. I think it's raining outside. Wow, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but that's really rain. Wow. See, I think I would like a cat when I go. I'd like a casket that every now and then comes up to the surface. You could get hit by a little rain, you know. Um, We got a lot of great uh responses that came in about people talking about rejection. And, you know, I, I didn't. I, I I'm thankful for the stories, man. A lot of a lot of just people sharing rejection, and uh, and we'll get into it in, in just a minute. And I'll and I'll talk about rejection. Uh, but first, I gotta let you know about Magic Spoon. And Magic Spoon is, I mean, it's not what you think it is, man, or it might be. You know, when I was growing up, cereal was important in our household. We had five major food groups, and they were cereal. Cereal, 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 and cereal. And that was it, man. I remember at one time we had 27 boxes of cereal in our house. And you could go in there. And sometimes it was, um, you know, the older kids would lock you in the cereal closet. You know, and you'd be in there just frost or flaking your face off and stuff. You have as much cereal as you could have and you'd cry until somebody let you out. But um, but it was nice, man. And it's nice to go back to those times in your life and have you sit at night and have you a bowl. You got the baby put to bed. You know, little Abigail's put to bed. You know, you clean that diaper off. And little Abigail's resting, you know. Or little Lance or whatever his name is. Little Lancelot. 
you know, you, you took the chain mail off of him and, and, and put him to sleep. And now it's your time to have your little something. To hit that freaking, hit that face of yours with that magic milk. And magic, uh, you know, sustenance. And who does that for you better than anybody is Magic Spoon. You know, if you want to cut down on carbs but still have that sugar cereal vibe, Magic Spoon does it. Zero grams of sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. It comes in four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. What's blueberry? And you know right there, that sounds like the Spice Girls. If they did a Spice Girl reenactment, but maybe from, you know, um, the Middle East or from Morocco. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blue bar. And look, I'll tell you this. It tastes amazing, man. It gives you just enough of that hit. Just enough of that childhood dose. Of having those magical tastes from back in the day. But still maintaining your uh your physicality and your health it's keto friendly gluten friendly grain free soy free low carb and gmo free and right now you can try it go to magicspoon.com slash t-h-e-o to get that variety pack and try it out today be sure to use promo code theo at checkout to get free shipping and Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash Theo and use code Theo for free shipping. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring the podcast. Go get a taste of your childhood. Man, that rain, it's really coming in, man. I don't, I, I, if I keep talking about it, you can't hear it. You guys aren't even believing me, man. But this rain, man, it sounds like about 30 German shepherds pissing on a tin roof, man. It's, this is a hearty batch, you know. This is that kind of rain where it's like you've been in a conference for three hours and the guy wouldn't stop doing the PowerPoints. And you didn't want to leave because you were already on, you know, kind of probation or light probation with the with the boss. So you waited till the end of the deal, and then you chirped out of that uh, out of that Crown Plaza uh, showroom and hit that urinal, baby. You know, I wish they came out with a product where you could you could throw it in the urinal and they would clog it up for about two minutes. So then, whenever you urinated, you could see how much you did. Because that's one thing I don't like is um. You do urine, but you don't know how much. I mean, what's the point of even, you know, what's the point of even pissing if you don't know how much you did? You know, what's the point What's the point of, of making urine if you don't know how much you just made? So if we could find a way to briefly kind of clog up a toilet just long enough for you to kind of have a little bit of pride in yourself. I think people would feel, you know, that pride might carry over back into the workplace. So that's just me spitballing, baby. That's what they call me, baby, spitballing Vaughn. What else, man? What else is going on? Um, Oh, we got these rejection calls, man. They're good. They're really, really good. So I want to get right into them, man. And thank you guys for being a part of this show that the, 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 uh, number is always 985-664-9503. And I want to thank um, Riley Mao is not here today. And it just just didn't fit kind of with the schedule. We'll, we'll have him back at some point. Um, we got producer Sean in today. And he's not in here right now. He's at the Hardys. But he... Um, he is helping us, and we are grateful for that, man. Thank you very much. Let's hit a call. Let's hit the hotline. Here we go. Hi, Theo. This is Ashley calling from Indiana. and Ashley from Indiana, baby. And Indiana is a real, yeah, it's a popular state. One of the probably 50 most popular states right there, gang. And I just heard your segment on being rejected, and... 
I've never actually been rejected, but I did have to reject someone one time, and it was super embarrassing. I um, had a client at my vet clinic um, where I was a receptionist for a long time. In a vet clinic, you know, that's where they bring animals. Oh, you got a little pony, and he's got asthma. They bring his little ass in there, you know. <laughs> you know, or you got a little squirrel, bruh. And he got maybe a leak in his uh, vast deference. And he's eating nuts, but he's blowing them at the same time. You know, it's just, they do all kind of stuff like that. It's shit you can't handle at the house. Gang, baby onward. And um, took care of his dog and gave him his medicine and told him how to take care of his dog. And told him to have a great day. And he left and he called me back about 10 minutes later and said that um, he knew he was a little bit older than me, but... Um, I was really kind to him, and he had just gone through a divorce, so he wanted to take me out on a date. But I obviously, well, at the time I had a boyfriend, and I said, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend. But being a good receptionist that I was, I told him that I could take down his name and number and call him back at a later time if things changed. Well, that's kind of perfect, Ashley, to, uh, you know, to just be, you know, get that response. Take his number, save it for later. Because you also don't know what can happen. You don't know what God's doing for you. You know, you may be getting a, you know, that may that man could be your second husband. What if times get different? You know, what if your, you know, your current, your fiance or whoever that man, the boyfriend falls into a volcano. And now you got, you don't know what to do. And you hit up freaking dog daddy and he's got a little bit of money. Next thing you know, you know, you over at his house early one morning making a couple of quick cakes for him and the pooch. It's, you know, it's, uh, you just don't know. You got to save numbers. You got to save numbers. You got to, you got to hedge your bets. You know, my daddy used to, he used to, when the church plate would come around, my daddy would throw a business card in it. You know, it's, you're supposed to put money in there and he put that business card in. And, uh, I think he thought they were like drawing for like a free lunch or something, but he would throw that business card in there. And he didn't even hey he he didn't even have any business. His business was nothing. His business was trying not to uh you know, sleep on the sofa at night. That was his his business was just trying not to make my mom mad. So he but he would throw it in there, dude. I don't even think it had any phone number on it. I think it just had his name on it and said business card on it. And he'd throw that bastard in there. You know, I think he was just hedging his bets. You know, just in case down the line, you know, he's thinking maybe the Lord needs somebody and whew. He hits, you know, he's got that card. Everybody else has just been tithing cash, but Pops throws in that little, that little connection piece. So, let's hear the rest of the call, man. I'm sorry I interrupted you, young lady. I don't know why. I don't know. It was like I was trying to get him in for a rabies shot the next week. I don't know what was going through my head. It was super embarrassing, and I took down his name and number and held onto that piece of paper like I was going to call him back at some point. Um, so I really hope that guy <laughs> moved on, and I think you will too. So good luck out there. Well, thank you. Yeah, and this is, you know, I got rejected by a woman at the crepery. And I still sat there point blank and ate a crepe right in front of her. So, you may see me on a future episode of Mind Hunter. But, um, but I'll say this, Ashley. One of the reasons, and I'll, and I'll get into the psyche of a male. One of the reasons this man probably did this because you took care of his dog. And, and in fact, a dog is, is an appendage of a man's, you know, private, baby. That wiener. And and some men got that little yapper. Some men got that growler. Some men got that snuggler wiener. Some men got that winter wiener where their wieners always kind of hibernate. But if you treat a man's puppy well or treat his dog well, then he in his mind, that's a reflection. Oh, this is how she's going to treat the rest of my body. You know, a dog is really, it's an extension of a man. And it's not exactly an extension of his, of his privates, of his penis. But it's, it, it kind of has that same, if you had an extra penis that could catch a Frisbee, 
That's what your dog is. You got to think into the male psyche. And um, so if he sees you treating that thing, he sees you, you know, petting the dog and giving it a little, you know, maybe a little treat, maybe a chicken liver. He's going to say, oh, ah, uh, you know, if she'll take care of that, she might take care of the rest of me. Because, uh, you know, I remember being really young. You'll try to, f I remember your penis becomes so alive at a certain point in your life. I mean, when you're 13 or 12 or 14, your penis is like a, I mean, it just, it's just so damn insane. It's like having a, um, it's like having a chatty friend. You know, you're trying to be cool and be calm and then blah, 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 blah. I want some tears. You know, your penis just activates and you got to do something. You got to, you got to handle them or mangle them. You know, I remember when I was young trying to even feed my penis like a little uh, Captain Crunch. I remember I'd get a little pocket knife and cut the Captain Crunch kernels into halves and try to you know, sir, you know, feed one of your damn wiener, I guess. Or just, you know, being young, man. And just Anyway, I think that's why the man hit on you because you, you know, he you came at the dog. But I think it's beautiful and I think it's a compliment. And he probably just was looking for somebody to show him a little bit of care. And you were the first one around him, you know. It's crazy how we all could use some care, man. We all use somebody to pat us on the neck or to, you know, throw a frisbee or give us a little chicken liver. Man, I hope y'all can hear that rain. It is cool, though. I almost wish I was out in it. And the police as well. You hear them? The police are around here. But yeah, I went, I went kayaking on the, out on the Harpeth. About a two-hour run out there. You know, a couple people out there drinking Mountain Dew Code Reds, you know. And it was nice, man. This one nice thing out here in Tennessee, it was really a perfect day because the the weather was, it was fall, but it was hot. So it's 80 degrees, but it's, you know, October, whatever, 20th or something. Um... So the, all the foliage had shifted. You know, because Mother Nature likes to use different crayons, man. She don't, you know, she goes, she goes heavy on the green for a while. But once she starts to realize there's other colors in the box, that bitch gets extravagant, baby. And one thing in Tennessee, you can see that foliage, man. So you could really, you just, you know, we're just yakking through these creeks. And you just see the, just all these trees and leaves and. Just the endless soundtrack of God, man, nature. It's just a playlist that... It's just a playlist that's... It's never ending, man. As far as we know. Let's take another call. 985-664-9503. What's up, Theo? This is Chris from Connecticut. What's up, Christopher? Chris. And Chris is short for Christopher a lot of times. Or Christmas or christening. Or what else? And that's it. Let's hear more. I'm calling about uh, getting turned down. It just made me think of a story from college. I had went to a bar with a couple of my friends. It was after a uh, intramural softball game. So. Oh yeah, intramural softball. I feel you, baby. Intramural softball, dude. There was always some psycho on every team. He had on like nine headbands. He's putting on eye black. He's doing coke. He's like, Rawr! then he hits a double and tears his ACL. His name's always Hank. 
Let's hear more, brother. Let's go, Christopher. So uh, you know how that is. But uh, basically, I, I'm dancing by myself, which is another great part of the story I forgot. But uh, I'm dancing by myself, and some girls dance with some guys. And I look over, and she kind of gives me the swoop to, to pull her in. So I, I kind of swoop over, I'm thinking smoothly, and start grinding up on this girl. And uh, it, 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 she, she's digging it, you know. She's down. She, she's grinding up on me, and we're dancing. And I just went in for the kiss, thinking, like, you know, next step is trying to make out with her. And she stops me immediately and goes, whoa, 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 you are too sweaty. And truth be told, I'm going to be honest, I, I probably was too sweaty after that softball game. But, uh, yeah, that's my turn down story, basically. She wasn't having it. So, hope that works for the podcast. Love you, man. Gang, gang. Bye. Buzz, buzz, as always, and uh, keep shit going, man. We love you. Love everything you got. Love you too, man. Thank you, bro. I love you too, man. And thanks for that, for that, for that statement. And I'll tell you this, man. Uh, you know, sweat is really sweat is that body river. It's that baby glaze, man. I mean, sweat is it's a part of. You know, a mother sweats when she brings her child into the world. You know, you don't want to see, you don't want to, you know, be born and your mother's dry as hell. Like, damn. Who's this, amph- you know, who's this dang uh, arachnid? You know, you want to be, you want, you want that drippy mom after it. You know, you don't want, I mean, I want to be born, I want my mother in a damn tank top. You feel me? I want her looking like she just had a, you know, had been doing two a days. I don't want one of these dry ass mothers having a child. And that's sweat, man. Sweat is just advertising that you've been trying. That's all it is, man. You know, it takes eight minutes to get sweat. Sweat's not a free gift. You know, anybody could just do some bullshit. But somebody's got to do some bullshit at a decent heart rate for eight minutes to be sweating. And way to go dancing by yourself, man. That's us dancing by yourself, the ultimate sign of confidence. If you look at different television shows or programs or even drawings, some drawings, you'll see somebody dancing by themselves. And there's, there's nothing, it's a sign of confidence, man. If a guy's dancing by themselves, at first, a lot of other guys will be like, man, look at this fool. But nine out of ten times, that guy ends up dancing with a woman. Or some woman meanders over to that guy. There's something magical about it. There's something magical about that, just that confidence, baby. That French confidence, man. There's something just warm about it. There's something inviting. So more power to you, man. It sounds like you're on a great track. You're doing, you know, you're dancing by yourself. You're doing your own thing. You're doing softball. Do co-ed softball. That way you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Hit, hit, you know, hit it inside the park homework because that's all people hit in, in softball. And then, uh, and then... You know, dance when you get to home plate. You know, and you already have women there at the place. You don't have to go to the pub. Dude, I remember one time we used to play softball and they put this dude Ladavius, man, and he was um he was an urban youngster, if I'm real honest with you. And he might have been a little bit shh. He might have had a little hit of Shanghai in him or something, but he uh I don't know, he had that kind of, he looked a little, you know, sleepish, if you will. He had that gas leak kind of vibe, but, um, and he was in a wheelchair, bro. He was WC'd up, and they put him out in left field by me. So I had to be out there with him. So every now and then, you know, the ball, if it got hit high enough, I'd try to push him over there to get under it, man. And we were, man, we were horrible. We were horrible. I'll tell you what's not horrible, though, is Fairty. Fairty brand. One unexpected side effect of this year is uh, fashion. We don't even know what is fashionable anymore. It's like sweatpants were forced into fashion because everybody's at home. 
you know, uh, Zoom suddenly became fashion. Everything it has changed. Fashion has changed. There's no like going out attire. It's all changed. So how are we supposed to know what to shop for right now? Well, do what I do. Don't buy for now. Buy for forever. For timeless pieces that will last a lifetime of wear, check out Faraday. Faraday makes high quality, comfortable clothing for life. And that's what you need. A lot of people are shopping like, I got this in two weeks. I got this in a month. I got everything forever. That's what I need clothes for. Every piece is made to last, last a lifetime. Guaranteed. You know, Faraday is committed to community and the environment and all they do. They donate to the Surfrider Foundation and 1% for the planet. The company is family run by the Faraday family and they are hands-on ensuring value in everything they do. If you haven't checked out Faraday, you'll want to. They have, uh, you know, they just have a kind of, it's like patterns and 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 not patterns things that are yeah i guess timeless is the really perf the perfect word i mean you could be on a boat or you could be reading a book you could be taking a walk with your loved one you know you could be picking up a kiddo or or sitting at a ball field i mean they just have this kind of yeah this timeless vibe um it's practical it's cute it's comfortable it's it's different man you know, buying forever is the smartest way to shop. You know, it's too, it's it's over. You just buy for this or buy for that, man. There is no this or that really right now. Everything is the same. Every moment is the same. And Faraday is meeting you there. Right now, you get up to 25% off your next Faraday purchase when you go to FaraDBrand.com slash Theo. That's F-A-H-E-R-T-Y. FaritiBrand.com slash Theo for 25% off. FaritiBrand.com slash Theo. Go see what they have. Um, it's comfortable. It's it's quality. It's it's forever. I got to tell you about uh, this deal right here is Athletic Greens. And I ordered them from my dang mother. And I'll tell you this. She won't leave me alone now. She used to leave me alone and now she won't. And I got to attribute that gumption and that vitality to athletic greens. You know, the perfect diet doesn't exist. And I'll tell you why, because your day changes. You can say, I'm going to do this forever. I'm going to do this for six weeks. But the day changes. Your Monday's different than your Tuesday, your Wednesday's. It's, all, it's like, oh man, today I got up later, then I got up earlier, and then this, and then work, and then, you know, a wife, lawsuit, everything. But now that, 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 that can all be different because with Athletic Greens, it's that one cup shop. You get up, you drop that powder, and it's next level greenery. I mean, it's like somebody just drug you through Mr. McGregor's garden with your mouth open. Man, it's like somebody just beat you in the face with the damn produce section. Perfect Greens handles it all. If you're looking for one product that has as much high-quality nutrients in it as possible, then you want to consider Athletic Greens. As many as 75 vitamins and minerals, multi-minerals, green complex, probiotics, prebiotics for gut health, an immunity formula, digestive enzymes, and adaptogens. The multivitamin that goes the extra mile. It encompasses all the other nutrient categories. You get it all, immune system support, gut health support. And right now, Athletic Greens is giving my audience a special offer on top of their all-in-one formula, which is a free liquid vitamin D supplement with your first purchase for additional immune support. You know, we're heading into winter and you want to have some vitamin D. It's crucial. It is crucial. And if you can't get the sun, then you want to get it somehow. And this is how. So if you're looking to upgrade your multivitamin or take one nutritional formula that's going to help cover your daily nutritional bases, then you want to consider Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens makes as, getting as much high-quality nutrition as possible incredibly easy. And right now, you can go to athleticgreens.com slash Theo. You'll receive up to a year's supply of liquid vitamin D for free with your first purchase. 
look, it's a great Christmas gift for someone. Someone who's maybe going to try a new diet. This will, I tell you this, you put it in the glass, you mix it in, you take it, kaboom. Kaboom. I mean, it's like Operation Desert Storm, baby. This thing makes you feel fireocious. Go to athleticgreens.com slash T-H-E-O and support the podcast. All right, let's take another call here. Oh, Theo, gang, gang. Gang, baby boy, what's happening with you? What up, son? Not much. Hey, uh, long time, first time here. Hey, uh, I'm calling about the rejection, man. One time, my first day in my brand new apartment, I get in the elevator. There's this just, oh, this gorgeous brunette woman way out of my league comes in. I got me and my dog, right? Oh, yeah, you got that little hit man with you, baby. And uh, she's actually excited to see the dog. She gets in all happy, starts petting my dog. Oh, yeah, and this goes back to it. Once you touch that dog and the man imagination goes from that wiener dog to just that wiener. You feel me? I froze up, man. I locked up. The only thing I could come up with was, oh, you like dogs? And uh, she looked at me like I was probably the dumbest thing on planet Earth and gave me a smile probably because she felt bad at that. But then we had to take the elevator 10 stories up in this awkward, embarrassed, I didn't know what to say. I was all red. I was sweaty, man. Mm. I've never been the same since. Gang, gang. Gang, brother, you never will be the same, man. That rejection, it, it sticks in you, man, like a like a magnet with talons, man. It just it gets into you. It eats your ass, baby. It eats your ass with buck teeth. Oh, man. And the elevator, I mean, first of all, there's so many things going on in that story. First of all, elevators... If we if we focus if we just build an elevator that went all the way to heaven, we wouldn't have we would you know we wouldn't have a lot of the problems we have. But instead, we're building two store three three stories. Dude, sometimes you see a building with two stories as an elevator. Bitch, just throw your friend up there, dog. Fucking jump. We got wasting all of this money. And also, if we, we if we had a, if we had an elevator that went all the way up to heaven, we, you know, we do two stories, three stories. You know, you go to a dentist, you go to a, some tax evasion place, you go to chiropractor, bro. Dude, look, if a chiropractor ain't on the first floor, that place is a scam, bro. Okay, facts. You know, I don't want I don't want to go to the bent house, daddy. I want to go to the penthouse, man. I want to go all the way to the top. We should make an elevator. That goes to heaven, man. Think about it. That way, when you're ready to go, you're ready to go. It's not a bad idea, man. But, dude, yeah, it's so tough when you get with a girl, you start and you you have a chance, and you're like, uh, you like dogs? And then you just, there's nothing you can do, so now your voice gets locked up. And you have to ride floor after floor just thinking, what do I say now? And anything would have anything would have been okay. You could have said anything, man. You could have said anything. You're just looking at your dog. You keep petting your dog like a pervert. Oh, that's heartbreaking, man. And I've been there and we've all been there. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you've definitely been rejected by women, and and we've all been there, man. We've all been there. <laughs> oh, that's a frustration. Just each floor, ding, ding. I'm a, I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. Uh, it's hectic, man. But at least you were in the elevator. At least you had a chance. You know, I don't want to realize sometimes, but I realize. Men get, 
with who they're brave enough to talk to. That's who you end up with. A man's wife is whoever they were brave enough to talk to. Unless the woman picks the man. Sometimes that happens these days. I'm drinking this mountain water called Liquid Death. And it's supposed to be one of the most fine waters they have from Australia. Or somewhere. Damn, it's good too, man. Mm. God, it tastes wet, bro. Damn. It tastes like a million children just kind of gleeking in your mouth, you know? And not children, like children, children, just like hypothetical adult, you know, non-ageless children. I'm not talking nothing wild, bro. So get off my, get off of me on that. But yeah, man, hey, at least you had a dog, bro. At least you and your dog are sitting there and your dog's like, man, I did my part. I wing manned as good as I could. She petted me. All you had to do was say something. Mm. I think you owe your dog an apology though, brother. But I feel you, man. Thanks for sharing. We got another call that came in here. 985-664-9503. What up, Theo? This is Greg. So you mentioned uh, rejection. Well, check. What's up, Greg? And that's short usually for Gregory or Gregarious is something different. That's more of an urban name, but Gregory for a white. Let's go. Check this out. I was in Somalia, like the worst place you could ever be in the world. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I've been to a Wawa in Philadelphia after about 1.40 a.m., dude. And I saw a guy shoot a twenty two caliber gun right through a um right through a ham and egg um sandwich and that shit fucking blew out the glass and that shit was pretty pretty dicey but uh not challenging you just uh just kind of trying to relate i guess onward getting shot at and i get back to uh our our base and i have a letter from my fiance hold on i'm gonna back you up so i can hear all your story i'm sorry for interrupting you and thanks for your service man well check this out i was in somalia like the worst place you could ever be in the world, getting shot at. And I get back to uh, our our base, and I have a letter from my fiance saying she just moved in with some dude. Rejected. I had to go out in the desert, look into the sun until my tears dried up. Anyways, hey, I love your show. Gang, gang. Gang, bro, dang. Man, that's hectic, man. That's hectic, man. Oh. You know, I bet I'm going out on a limb here. But I bet, I bet it was real painful at the time, man. But I bet after a certain point, or in hindsight, years later, I bet you're able to look back and be like, man, I'm glad that I was far away. Because then you're not there to have to deal with the breakup. You're not right there to have to drive past each other and see each other at the at the twice daily or at the, you know, Tom Thumb or whatever. You know, it's, um, I think there's probably some blessing in that. Now, also being out there in the desert is sheer hell, man. I remember I went to Kuwait one time to do some military shows and I was on cigarettes. And I was doing cigarettes, bro. I'd puff out, bro. I was jerking off and puffing out. You know, I was basically just doing my best. And um, and I remember it was too hot to even smoke. It was too hot to even smoke a cigarette. The air outside was hotter than a cigarette was. So if you inhaled a cigarette, it was almost, it was a colder, it felt like, than the regular air. So it was just worthless, you know, it was pointless. It just, you could just inhale the regular air and it felt like a cigarette. So hot. And I remember some girl went on their morning run or something and she stopped by my little cabin or whatever. 
and try to make love to me and I couldn't get an erection. So, I mean, she was petting my dog, man, with, she was petting my dang dog and that thing just wasn't waking up. I think it might have been down. It was just old yellow, bro. My, 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 my wiener was dead, man. What else, man? Uh, oh, I'll, t- I'll tell you that. I, one thing that about about uh, being in the elevator that gets my girdle. I mean, it just boils my damn beef. Uh, boils my beef. Is when somebody gets in with a little child. And they're like, okay. Okay, Tanner, press the button. And Tanner's standing there. He's got all 10 fingers up his nose. You know, he's just straight bug hunting. He don't give a damn. And they're like, all right, Tanner, press the button. And Tanner's like. Then he beats his damn little booger hunters up against the all like, you know. Up against all the buttons. And it reminds me, actually, I got to tell you this one, this one story, uh, I'm in an elevator. I'm going back to elevators and I'm in the elevator. I get in and this couple gets in at the same time and they have a little child, man. And this child probably been alive. Maybe I'm guessing mm, probably 170 days. You know, he still smell a little gamey, still a little gamey in the air. And, uh. You know, like if an animal came up, I bet he would pick that little baby up by the back of the neck. You know what I'm saying? He's still a little fresh out that mom body. So we're in there. We get in and I I felt like the mom had maybe been drinking. And she said to the husband, she said, oh, honey, maybe Dunstan will want to press the button. And first of all, you can't name a baby Dunstan. You can't name a baby Dunstan, man. I think Dunstan is a is a baseball bat. You can't name a baby Dunstan. Think about a baby named Dunstan, dude. Yeah, you can't. So I'm looking, I'm like Dunstan, and I'm looking at the baby, and I'm thinking, well, sure, surely she doesn't mean the baby. The baby is five months old. That baby couldn't. Dunstan don't have, he, he, he you know, he can't even move his arms. He don't. He's like a scarecrow with, with no scare in him. He can't do nothing, you know? Um, I mean, a snake could eat him. You know, he has no, Dunstan don't have any capabilities. So she's like, Dun- honey, honey, maybe Dunstan would like to push the buttons. And I'm standing there like, we got to get going. You know, it's been about 18 seconds. That's a long time to start it for an elevator to start in modern day. So then the husband, he has has this look on his face like, what? Like, I don't, but then you can tell who wears the pants in the family, the lady. And I don't know if she like wanted to show off for me or what she's thinking, but next thing you know, the guy like puts, you know, Dunstan by the buttons and he don't do nothing. I knew he wasn't going to do nothing. And I'm thinking, man, I wish I had a law degree. Somebody needs to be here on behalf of Dunstan. Somebody could have Dunstan's best interests, man. And then they take Dunstan, man, and the dad, like, puts him by the thing, and he's not pressing him because he can't press him because he can't do anything. The only thing he's pressing or even thinking about pressing is just pressing a tit into his face, you know? He's that milk hound, baby. He's that fucking leche weasel, daddy. So now he, like, takes the baby and, like, pushes the baby against the buttons, (laughs) Like the side of the bait, like the shoulder and the ear and the in in the head, he like pushes like three buttons. <laughs> With little Dunstan is pushing him up against the buttons, man. And I pushed my own, man. He's like, "What floor you want to go to?" I was like, "I'll give Dunstan's already done enough, man. We're going to four fucking floors that none of us are on. I'll go where I need to go. I'll handle my own shit." All right, let's take another call here. Yo, Theo, what's up? It's your boy Matt from uh fucking New York. And What's up, Matt? And good to hear from you from you, my man, and thank you for calling and being a part of the show in New York. 
one of the premier states, one of the first states they ever had, New York, onward. And, uh, I heard you got rejected. It sucks, man. I've been there. So Thank you, brother. Yep, we, uh, we all have, and it's good to hear that others have. More? So I had a funny rejection story. So I was working at Planet Fitness at the gym. And, uh, Ooh. I don't know if we're going to call Planet Fitness a gym, man, but I'll go on with you. I'll go on with you here. This cute uh, Asian girl would come in there, and I kind of had a thing for her, so I'd flirt with her, you know, whatever. And Oh, yeah, baby, that Pinoy daddy. Onward. And uh, I was nervous to ask her out, though. She, she seemed really shy. I couldn't tell if she was into me or not. And that's the Asian dilemma right there when it comes to white males and uh, and Asian women. You have no idea. You have no idea. You could be getting married to an Asian woman and you have no idea if she likes you or not. There is no... I mean, if I were Asian, I would just play poker. No one has any idea what is going on. You could be a brain surgeon. You could work at a Hardee's. I, there's no gives. Onward. And then, like, some of my coworkers hyped me up. They're like, "Yo, man, go for it, go for it." So, I thought, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it big. I'm gonna buy her a flower. I got her a rose, Ooh. and I hid the rose like behind the desk, and I waited for her to leave." Oh man, so much romance! Onward. And this is the most embarrassing thing because. She walked out into the parking lot, and I followed her out. Like now, saying it out loud, it sounds so creepy. Oh, but yeah. at the time, I thought it would be like romantic. And I said, "Hey, excuse me." And then she turned around, and I gave her a flower, and I was like, "You know, maybe we should we should uh, go go out sometime. You know, give me a chance." Blah blah blah. And she was like. Uh, so she was so she felt so awkward. I could tell, and like at this point, I knew I I, I fucked up. And she's just like, "Oh, I'm busy with school and stuff, whatever." And then like it was horrible because then she would come in to work out, and I'd have to see her again. And every time I was like trying to hide and shit. So yeah, we've all been there, man. So don't feel bad. But anyway, uh, gang, 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 brother, dang. What a story, man. Oh, I can feel it. You hid that flower the whole time. One of your coworkers noticed. They're all like chatting behind your back like, damn, he's about to fucking take an L. You know? And you're all fight. You hyped up. And, and once your mind goes over that cliff of I'm going to take a flower to a girl, you are, it's, bro, it ain't the 1800s. I feel you. I love the romantic side. It's just not as appreciated these days. People think you're a stalker. People think you're a stalker with a you know who also has a you know green thumb. But man, I commend it, bro. You hiding that bitch? You know you got a little bit of foliage tucked off behind the Z rocks. You sneak over. Ta da! She's shocked. And then she gave you the most age. I have to go to school more. <laughs> I have to go to school more? Come on. At least come up with some other. I'm on, you know, do something else. I'm on swim team. I have to swim all the time. Anything other than that. I have to go to school. But honestly, bro, in some Asian traditions, man, that's the thing. It's school or die, bro. There's not a lot of middle ground. You know, you and a lot of Asians, they get a B, they go missing. And that's documented, man. And then going back to the gym, man, I respect the hustle. I don't know if it's Anytime Fitness or Planet Fitness. One of them, dude, it's like seven. It's like seven dollars a month. You go in there. There's a Cocaine Anonymous meeting going on in one corner of it. Little Boosie's in another corner shooting a rap video. You know, some guys some guys using one of the overhead pull-down bars to pry off an ankle bracelet. Someone left a baby in a box at the bottom of the Stairmaster. Uh, there's a produce section for some reason. There's people practicing for supermarket sweep in there. Uh, it's just, there's some guy who has an aquarium. It's like, what in the... F 
it just none of it makes any sense. A lot of people are just going there to to bathe. Some guy's storing stuff in there. Like you go in, some guy's like has 40 locks on all the lockers in there and he's just storing all of his shit instead of getting like a regular storage. Um, And I don't know if that's Anytime Fitness or Planet Fitness, but one of them, man, one of them will leave you, will leave you uh, wanting more sometimes. But you get that grind, baby. You get that grind. And that's what's important, man. And that's what's important about your story, man. You got that grind, dog. Dude, I remember when I was in, let me think, sixth, seventh grade, there was this rich girl. And I don't know, she might not have been rich, but she was rich to me, man. She had two parents. She had a like a cat that was doing well. You know, she was, they were, you know, she was doing good. And I remember we went to their basketball game and I got me a flower, bro. I got me a rose in advance and I got, it was nice, dude. It was like $2.20 and they wrapped it up and that was an extra dollar. And I went all in. I had to get a ride all the way out to the other school. And I went with one of my, oh, I actually I rode out with one of my buddies because he was dating another girl. And, um, and he was dating another girl. And so we went to the basketball game and. Dude, she was on the cheerleading team, and at one point they sat down because they, you know, they dance team or something. And I walked over there, dog, and my face was turning red as could be. And I got down on one knee, bro, down on one hoof, man, like a marriage. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it. I got down on one knee, bro, like a marriage. And I gave this chick a dang rose, man. And the ball came bouncing over like that, you know. I wasn't even playing ball like, you know, like what a loser. I think some kid called me the N-word again. It was just bad. I think even the referee called me the N-word. But that was love, man. I gave it a shot. You know? There's something valuable in that. You know, you, you, you're unforgettable. You know, you're dancing, bro. Everybody else is standing around and doing this and sliding into the DMs, man. And you're sliding into that demilitarized zone, baby. You're sliding right into into Shanghai, man. You know, you're showing up. In real life, sliding into the DM. But that rose, baby. That Shakespeare move. And there's, there's some value in that. There's, you know, you're dancing, man. Everybody else is kind of doing the walk, but you're, you're dancing. And when you dance by yourself, dog, that never goes away. However you do that in your life, it comes out in all different types and facets, man. So, that's what we do here, man. We get rejected, bro, but we show up. And I'm happy to be showing up for myself today, man. It's not always easy, but, you know, you guys are always there for me and support. And uh, and I appreciate that. And I, and I try to do the same as much as I can for you. Um, so, gang, man. Love you guys, man. Uh, yeah, what else do we have going on? We got some good episodes coming up. Joe Coy will be on. Um, what else? We're trying to have... Uh, we got a couple of neat guests on. I don't want to say them yet because we're we're we're, we're close to having them, but you know we're really hopeful. And and what else, man? I just hope you're doing okay wherever you are today. You know, I hope you know that, uh, you know that you're loved, man. And there's people thinking about you, whoever you are, even if maybe you feel like there isn't. Um. Sometimes it's not that people don't love us, it's that we can't feel it. You know, and I hope you find a way to get out there this week and drop that rose, bro. Hit somebody with that foliage, dog. You know what I'm saying? Hum a damn dandelion. That's some little hoe, bro. Be real with it. So we'll go out the way that we came in, man. Because that's life, baby. How are we going to go out? How are we going to come in? We're going to dance while we're here. We're going to show that foliage while we're here. 
Damn, your coworkers, bro, they mess. They let you ride out into the distance, dog. Damn. But that's fine, man. They ain't us, dog. They they back there doing they probably lonesome, man. You gonna find somebody you're gonna find your lady Guinevere, dog. Amen. 100 percent fool. 100 percent fool. We'll go out the way we came in, man, with Matthew Kazial. And runs in the family. I would tell you of any new shows I have coming up, but I don't have any. Um, you know, we're still dealing with the disease and and Corvid lurks, man, or does it? Who knows? We don't know everything. The election's coming up. You know, I've already made my choice. I choose people, man. I choose people over politics, man. I just been thinking a lot about it and I'm not I'm just not letting these forces divide me from people. I mean, we're already losing connection here and there and now now they got people on, you know, putting us on different sides, playing this big dirty game of Red Rover. You know, I will vote. I will vote. Um and I encourage you to vote for whoever you want to. Whoever you want to. Um, but in my heart, I think I need to make another choice, and that's uh, 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 and that's for people, man. You know, but also I don't know what I'm talking about. So, <sighs> but I love you, man. I'll see you at that at that anytime fitness, baby. Anytime fitness and florist. Gang, this is Matthew Kazial with Runs in the Family. Be good to yourself, man. Right? It's out of my hands and in my blood. It's out of my hands and in my blood. It's red in a ledger and I can't pay up. Come on, man. It's just a matter of time. There ain't no stopping the sad sun. Can't watch the sin from the hands that made me. Can't outrun what runs in the family. Runs in the family. Way to go, baby. You can cut me down when the roots run deep. We get rejected, baby. We keep rolling, baby. I ain't gonna die when they bury me. We've all been rejected, dog. Crown of my father is at my feet. Find me in the rejects and section. You can pray for mercy, but it won't come cheap. Pray for mercy, baby. Matthew Kazi all runs in the family. I want to just take a second to thank everybody too that supports the Patreon, man. We don't, you know, we don't push a big Patreon and that's fine and we don't want to, uh, but we're just doing some good stuff over there and for the people that do, I feel like I don't say thank you enough. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, and we love you. Yeah. Now I'm just floating 
on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you my story Shine on me And I will find a song I will sing it just for you And now I've been moving way too fast On the runaway train with a heavy load of my Once so thin that the 